Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Yeah, this should be interesting. In the bullpen today, I have Jim Sedlak, Executive Director of American Life League. Now, we are going to talk about Planned Parenthood and reproductive rights. I find it kind of silly that two guys are talking about this, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, he is considered to be a recognized expert on Planned Parenthood. Uh, Jim, good day, welcome to Indisputable. Well, thank you, it's great to be on with you. Absolutely, I don't want to presume what you know or believe about reproductive rights in America or Planned Parenthood for that, uh, for that matter. So I will ask you to give us your thoughts, your sentiment as it relates to those items. Well, we're, we're one of the things that we do is to fight Planned Parenthood. Uh, we believe that Planned Parenthood brings a lot of uh, problems with it to wherever it goes. Uh, Planned Parenthood itself is an organization that pushes three philosophies. One is uninhibited sexual activity. Uh, the, the second is population control. And the third is eugenics. And those philosophies don't belong in the United States or anywhere else in the world today. And we don't want them in our communities. And, and they had 938 clinics in our communities back in 1995. We've got that down now to 563, but we wanna get rid of the whole 563 and do away with Planned Parenthood. You know, it's really interesting you say that. Do you believe Planned Parenthood, do they do anything in your opinion that is necessary for a, uh, for a society to operate safely? Not this, that other people don't already do plenty of. Well, other people also do what Planned Parenthood does as it relates to the things you do not like. But you are not on the show today talking about those organizations. You're only talking about Planned Parenthood. So I would like to submit to you on that Planned Parenthood is such a massive organization that one out of every five women in the United States of America, they have relied on Planned Parenthood for something. That's a big number. Over 90% of what Planned Parenthood does has nothing to do with the beef you all have with Planned Parenthood. I would imagine you have no issue with STD or STI testing. Am I correct on that? Uh, you know, you're not correct. We're you have an issue with people getting tested no, for we have a sexually with, transmitted infection? No, we have a, an argument with Planned Parenthood putting itself out as the one that's doing the testing. You don't want them to do it. When in, when in fact, it is Planned Parenthood's products that cause a lot of the problems and cause the STDs so, uh, problem. All right, so let me go down your rabbit hole here. Um, so you're not against testing for STIs, you're just against Planned Parenthood right. being the provider for that test because you believe Planned Parenthood somehow creates it in the first place. So they're giving people STDs or STIs? Well, what happens is Planned Parenthood promotes a lifestyle for young people, particularly mm -hmm. teenagers, that encourage them to get involved in sex. And we know, for example, that cervical cancer, one of the main causes of cervical cancer is early sexual involvement in multiple mm -hmm. sexual partners. That's, that's really the interesting. Kind of, that's the kind of lifestyle that Planned Parenthood uh, puts forward. Okay. Planned Parent, do Planned you, Parent, go ahead. Do you advocate for uh, protection? We advocate that they, they abstain from sexual activity. Oh, that'll never uh, work. <laughs> That's what everybody ever tells me, but you know what? Yeah, uh, did it you? It can work. Yes, actually, I, I was a You're virgin. You're still a virgin? I, got, I was a virgin when I got married, that was 53 years ago. Damn. Right? All right, man, you missed out on a lot, brother. All right, well, let me say this to you. Uh, Planned Parenthood, in addition to what you all have a beef with, they also do life saving cancer screenings. Uh, they provide protection for both men and women. They also provide uh, sex education uh, as well as Planned Parenthood uh, in the United States of America. And as I said, at least one out of every five women, they have been positively impacted by a service that Planned Parenthood has offered. And don't forget that this is a very affordable option for those who have been left out routinely, historically because of the disparities in healthcare and healthcare related services. I don't find those issues to be problematic. But let's go to the underlying issue for you. Because I would assume 
brother, that the reason you have this sentiment about Planned Parenthood is because you are in fact a pro-lifer. Am I correct on that assumption? Well, you're correct about part of it. Part of it, I'm a pro-lifer, absolutely. Is this the reason that I fight Planned Parenthood? What I say in every one of my talks around the country and have for 35 years, yeah. if Planned Parenthood never did a single abortion, we would still be fighting to stop the organization. Because a lot of the things that you just listed are the reasons why we fight Planned Parenthood. You say Planned Parenthood fights cancer. Well, in fact, we just talked about cervical cancer and they helped to spread it. Uh, we'll also tell you that you Planned really Parenthood believe that Planned Parenthood causes young people to have unprotected sex with each other. You really believe that? They say that. They said in 1952, uh, Planned so pa Parenthood, Dr. Lena Levine of Planned Parenthood in 1952 said mm -hmm. that Planned Parenthood sex education programs were designed to teach children how to obtain sexual satisfaction before marriage. And that they encourage the kids to experiment with sex and to get involved in sex. Because Where's the literature at today? I'm sorry, what? Where's the literature at today? Well, what do they say today? The organization now that currently exists. Oh, the, the organization today still promotes sex, sex education. Sex education, which is really, there you go. Which there is you really, go, brother. Which is really sexual indoctrination. Oh, come on, right? man. Sex ed education is a good thing. Kids, and the reason they're trying to get is they make millions and millions of dollars from every kid who gets involved in sex. They don't make <laughs> any money from kids who don't All get right. So some sex. of the stuff you're saying you, is, I'll is you, just. I can let, give you let, an example. Go ahead, brother. We, we gotta be. We gotta transition from this because a lot I, of what I, you're saying is hyperbolic. But go ahead. No, I, if you if if someone were to go out and get a month's supply of the birth control pill and go to their local pharmacy, they they would pay about twenty eight dollars for the for the month's supply. Uh, the pharmacist pays 21 to the drug company. If they go to Planned Parenthood and they get that same pill for that same month supply, they pay $18. A real, what they think is a real good deal, except they don't know that because Planned Parenthood is recognized as a quote charitable unquote organization, that they get special prices for the drug company and they buy that pill for $2 and sell it for $18. Okay. It's only one example of the millions of money in All profit right. that they make. Yeah, I, listen, I appreciate your point of view. You're flat out wrong on some stuff. Damn near 100% of what Planned Parenthood does is actually education based. The stuff that you all have an issue with is a you, very small part. But let you must uh, read, you allow must read me. a lot of Planned Parenthood literature because so, that's what sir, the one out of five, that's their number. In fact, sir, if you would, I have yes. allowed you, I do okay. need to make an insertion here. Go ahead. If your issue, and I want you to logically follow me on this. If your issue is that you are in fact pro-life, you believe in the sanctity of life, and you are anti, I would assume, freedom of choice. You do not believe in that freedom for a woman. You don't believe really in the reproductive rights of a woman. And as I said in the beginning of this conversation, I do find it quite silly that two men are having this debate because really it should be a woman having this debate with you, and I'm not a woman, but I would try to do the reproductive right allies justice, all right? If abortion is your issue, right, would you like to see less abortions in America? Is that part of your movement? Well, you're trying to turn the conversation from a specific conversation on Planned Parenthood to one on the general topic of abortion, right? What we're yeah, talking it about connects, is Planned Parenthood. You've Planned said. Parenthood Planned Parenthood, who is spreading the humanist philosophy, right? they have a philosophy that their leaders re receive awards for, saying there may or may not be a God, but it doesn't make any difference because God has no effect here on earth. There is no heaven, there is no hell. This is what they teach our kids. My brother, I, I really do, I, I would like you to stay on course with the conversation. Would you like to see less abortions in the United States of America or not? I would like to see, I would like to see no abortions in the United States. And okay. in the world. All right, explain this to me because conservatives have failed you greatly. Only other, only under Democratic presidents have you seen declines in actual abortions in the United States. Under Republican presidents, the numbers have either remained the same or they increased in the United States. Well, that's because under the Democratic presidents, the money that is spent on providing 
the abortifacient patient contraceptives, so-called contraceptives to kids and to young people that kill the babies after they're created, but in the womb so that they don't get counted because nobody knows how to count them when they die in the womb. Because Let me they ask can't you this, implant. okay, so that's what you count also as abortion, all right? Of so let's go there, let's go there then, okay? Because that's not the statutory language of abortion, but that is your personal belief, so we'll go with that. Where yes. do you derive this personal belief from? Is it a biblical basis for your belief or something else? No, it's science. I got involved in a pro, I, my degree is in physics. I, mm -hmm. I got involved in a pro-life movement because I read a book called The Tiniest Humans, was, was written by Dr. Uh, Lejeune and Professor Liley, okay. who pioneered RH factor transfusions in the uterus, and they wrote a book about their patients. And their okay. patients were babies in the womb, and it was such a compelling scientific book that that's how I got involved in the pro-life movement. I said, these are these are human beings in the womb and they're being killed. We've got to stop this. That's okay. how I got involved. So that, that's, that's your point of view. Uh, do you believe that under certain cases such as let's say rape or incest molestation, uh, that an abortion would be appropriate in that scenario? Absolutely not. You don't kill a child before the crime of the father. I mean, you just don't do that. We don't do that anywhere in society. Why would so we? So you agree? You agree? Well, first father. of all, you do understand people will have a good fundamental base argument uh, that a human being is not a developing fetus. So people would disagree with you, would disagree with you on that socially uh, and, and you know multiple ways, even uh, religiously. They may disagree with you based on their interpretation of well, scripture. But the well, issue. Go but I would I, I would tell them to look at the Carnegie stages of human development, which okay. has been used by biologists for for decades. Uh, that describes every phase from the from the moment of fertilization. Of mm -hmm. Stage one A is when the sperm enters the egg. From that stage on, uh, the Carnegie stages scientifically describes the human being in the womb, uh, and it's clearly it's not a, a an idea. It's not a hypothesis. It's not a belief. It's scientific fact. This is so remarkable. You know, I find cats like you really, really insensitive to the reality of rape victims and victims of molestation and incest. Because even in your dogmatic belief system, where there's plenty of disagreement among scientists and others, you will still be so insensitive and so inappropriate as to say that those who are victims of a crime, children, who had choice taken away from them should be victimized again by the choice taken away from them to bring it to term. That doesn't seem as if that's adverse to the life that's living already right here. Well, if you've had my life experiences where a lot of women who have been raped. Oh, come and on, man. And, and have had the abortion Your life or have not had the abortion came up to me and said, thank you for being here. Thank you for, for helping me just not to have the abortion because I, things are much better in my life now because I didn't have the abortion. And okay. other women who come up and say, what, why weren't you there when I had my abortion? The abortion brought more trauma on me than the rape did. This is, this is what okay, that's I just, deal with all the that's time. Just, listen, man, you can't, you can't cite actual stats. You're citing the microcosm of your personal experiences, and I don't even know if you tell them the truth or not. Well, the stats sounds are quite sounds quite silly to me, but I will tell you this: based on conversations I've had with rape victims on my radio show and other platforms, not one of those rape victims who got pregnant said they regret having the abortion because they did not want to carry. The child of their rapist. You got to understand that, right? Well, well, if if you would like to talk to the women that I talk to, I certainly can make a phone call and arrange to have a, as many as you want come on your show and tell you exactly. But the what issue was is a policy you. issue, sir. The issue is an issue of policy. Uh, you may have some women that you talk to that say, you know what, I'm glad I did it, or. I regret doing it. Okay, that's their personal experience. But based on policy, would you rather have a policy that says you're forced to have a a child, even if you're raped as a child? You want that policy in America? I want the policy in America that we recognize every human being's life and that once. Well, a, what about a the human being that got raped? 
we we de- we deal with her and and provide her what she needs, but we don't kill her baby. She needs a choice, sir. Provide her with a choice in the policy that says, you know what? If you want to have this fetus aborted because you were raped, molested. Uh, it was a case of incest, whatever it may be, she should have a choice, at least in that narrow definition of what you believe, right? Well, we can't give choice to everybody for everything. You know, oh, women. <laughs> so, so women or young ladies who nature has given the choice to should not have the choice based on your policy. Perfect not, once world. Ba- not, not once they're dealing with another human being. Why do we you think? To- do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? Yes. Why do you think God did not make you with the ability to have a baby? Why? Well, God God has his reasons for doing everything. A yeah. woman is completely different than a man. All right. Uh, the, so the, don't you think the physical since makeup, God the or, mental or nature is better? Whatever you believe in, God, nature, supreme being, the great energy, whatever you believe in. Don't you find it ironic that many times as men like yourself, and I don't mean to be brute here, but you're an old white guy. You don't find it ironic that old white men are the ones typically saying what a woman's right should and should not be as it relates to their reproductive health. Well, I'm only second in charge here. My leader is Judy Brown, a very, very <laughs> good woman. And and most of the leaders in the pro-life women are in the pro-life movement are women. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm sure you had some of them on your on your show. Sure, before. absolutely have. Right. Now, so, my producers are saying we got five minutes. So let me ask you this, you believe in God, you're a man of faith. What do you think the Bible says about abortions? I think the Bible probably doesn't mention abortion because it was pretty much unthinkable. But you know, the, the thing here is you seem to put a lot of facts, a lot of emphasis on statistics. You quoted all those statistics in the beginning. Where do those statistics come from? They come from the Center for Disease Control. The Center for Disease well, Control. Well, some come from yeah, some come from the CDC, and others came from Pew Research. Uh, and I had a I have a couple other sources here, and I'll be happy to provide you with that information. Uh, but let me go back to my original point about uh, scripture, because if you're a man of faith, you need to know exactly what the scripture says, right? No, we think, we, let's let's talk about Planned Parenthood. It doesn't believe well, in well, the hold scripture on, sir. at all. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm the, going the to, issue but we, you we, do. Just, you see, here's the thing. You do, and cats like you routinely will use scripture as a way to uphold well, not an using argument. Scripture. You're, you're well, the you only one, you're the you one said, bringing up scripture. But sir, I you haven't said, brought up scripture. But you said it's not in the scripture. It was not uh, even considered. I simply want to correct the narrative that you put out there. It is mentioned in the scripture. It is part of the uh, text, and I will read it to you. It's in Exodus 21. Verse 22, it says, if any man should quarrel and hit a pregnant woman and she miscarries the baby, he will be punished when the woman husband's husband demands of him restitution. He shall surely pay a civil penalty. Now in scripture is right in Exodus 21, 22 through 25. Check it out when you get a moment. In scripture, if a man physically assaults a woman and the woman miscarries the fetus, even the Bible does not count that as a murder. It counts it as a civil offense where the other party, the violator must pay a penalty. If it was murder, it would then be a charge of murder in the Old Testament of the scripture. Why do you think the scripture does not call that murder? If we want to look at Planned Parenthood's philosophies, what we would would do is go to read the Humanist Manifesto 2. And I invite all of your listeners to go read that because the Humanist Manifesto 2 is the one that lays out that there are no rights or wrong, there are no commandments. You decide whatever you want to decide, and we don't want Planned Parenthood teaching that to our children in the school All right. well, they and getting six hundred million to, dollars brother. in government money. All right, they don't. They don't have to. Uh, you know, people have a choice. Isn't that the remarkable thing about America? Right? You still have choice here. Okay. Are you for uh, mask mandates? No. 
that cause that's a violation of your constitutional or civil liberty, correct? No, because they don't work. <laughs> I, again, I, my, my basis is on science. Oh, my man. Basis is on, all my all, basis of, is all on of the science. science, all of the field of science, except for a handful of, of outlier studies, they do say mask work. I'm sure when you've gone to your a medical health provider, they had a mask on, and your doctor and nurse, they've been wearing masks for decades under uh, the hospital uh, protocol. But I appreciate you, man. Thank you for being on the show. All right. Have a good right. day. You too.